diet and exercise were the answers that synergistically worked. I could see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack, combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser oxy powder, the secret 12 bioavailable vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it, and it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. Yeah, it has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. Joining me in studio today is award-winning filmmaker Kevin Booth. He's the director of American Drug War, American Drug War II, and other films. And, of course, he is constantly trying to shed some light on the upper echelons of government corruption, risking his life and not to mention blowback from some of the world's most dangerous drug cartels. Uh, Kevin, thanks for joining us. Sure. Thanks for having me. It's great to be back in Austin yeah. in a while. So obviously it's always a dangerous time to be a journalist. Um, you know, recently obviously we had the massacre at the Charlie Hebdo magazine um, in retaliation for their characterization of the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, but, what, but what we really covered here we thought was even scarier was the response by the mainstream media to self-censor. They would put up images of, of the police officer there who was begging for his life, yet they wouldn't put up a cartoon. What do you think about the attack on the free press and you know, giving I in? don't know. I, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to think. I, you know, I think if part of us believe this is all like a staged event, you know, from the the Alex Jones school of thought here in the Alex studio. I mean, I almost it almost feels like this little chapter has to do with kind of getting the liberals on board a little bit. You know, I, I, it's really interesting to suddenly see. Um, Bill Maher come on Jimmy Kimmel two nights ago and, and was just dead serious. And suddenly there's like this new kind of like uh, vibe in the air with, with Jon Stewart and, and these, you know, and I love all those guys. I love Bill Maher. I love Jon Stewart. I love all those guys. But it seems like now they're on board the war on terror and a whole new level that they weren't before. So, exactly. you know, it's, it's, like a, it's like reaching a new level. Yeah, and, and people actively calling for even more militarization of the police. Um, which there was actually a third hostage situation in, in Paris today. We don't really know if it had anything to do with the specifics of the Charlie Heb Hebdo attack, but it just kind of goes to show that when you have, you know, 1,500 heavily militarized police in your city looking for people, they're still able to take hostages in another part of, of the city because there's no, they don't have guns to protect themselves, even the police officers don't. So calling for this over-militarization of the police doesn't even really make sense especially when they're here policing us, you and I. Um, but 
do you agree with some of these mainstream outlets that you know they shouldn't show certain images because they offend? No, no. I think it's just. I think we should be allowed to look at anything we want, and and anytime they do that, it just you know, they're just making you want it more. Like like this deal that just happened with that movie, The Interview. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole time I was watching this whole Sony scandal, I'm thinking. Either these people are idiots or this is the most brilliant like PR strategy campaign I've ever seen in my life because it's a crappy movie, but now everybody's going to go see it, including me. <laughs> um, and so, you know, you can't, it, it never works. Like whenever you try to censor it, you're just going to make people want to see it. And, and yet they know that anyways. And so, yeah, it's just self-perpetuating. Yeah, and then now with the internet, it's always kind of coming back around that they sort of had their hand in it the entire time and they're thinking, oh, well, if we... We just our sales were through the roof when we released it online, way more than they would have been. Uh, so now they're thinking that this could be something they they could do in the future for other films. But are we going to have more fake cyber attacks? To <laughs> what was the last one? I remember the last Temptation of Christ. So that was that was one. I mean, every every time one of these happens, it just you know it's a way of just making everybody pay attention. You yeah. know? And so absolutely, it's uh, you know I don't know I I think. Uh, Censorship, you, you, you either have freedom of speech or you don't, you know, there's no, there's no line. You can't draw a line in there. Right. Well, you know? you've been really fearless with a lot of your films and uh, we've actually got a story up on, on Infowars.com today about uh, the drug cartels putting a $45 million bounty on Rick Perry's head as well as uh, Sheriff Arpaio, Sheriff Arpaio, who was, you who know, I spent time with yeah. as well. And yeah. do you ever fear for your life in that respect? You know, I mean, I, I did censor one scene out of the last film I made, and, and we were in this uh, neighborhood in Juarez where I was shooting all this, like, really poor people, and there was all these little rubble houses and people living in boxes. In the middle of all this was, like, this pimped-out mansion painted purple, and it's, gee, I wonder where the cartel guy lives, right? And I was going to put it in there, but then I realized on Google Maps, with looking at it, that you could actually, f you know, because I was saying where we were in the movie, that I could actually go on Google Map and figure out like where this cartel leader's house was for my movie and, and everybody, you know, all the producers and, and everybody else involved. And I was like, let's do it. And everybody else in the movie, the investors <laughs> and everybody. So I got, um, um, I chickened out on that one, I'll admit, you know, someday I'll, maybe I'll put out that image on my deathbed <laughs> or something. About, it, it won't matter anymore. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think, uh, it, you know, you got to put yourself out there a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, obviously I, I'm not brave or anything like that. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want anything bad to happen to me or my family. Just, you know, just it, it tells stories. I think a lot of times when these things happen, it's very random. Uh, and as far as Sheriff Arpaio, I don't know that much about Rick Perry, you know, but I know a lot more about Arpaio because I've been crossing lines with him for a while. And, and uh, it, it seems like, I mean, I remember when, when I went to go with him, he had like a, uh, like a bomb proof car and he had, he's always had threats against his life and all that. And, so, and half of the time, I think he's making those things up himself just to make himself famous, um, in Phoenix, you know, and when you go to Phoenix or back then when I was filming on this is, you know, years ago, you know, you, you, you talk to anybody and it's just like, oh yeah, we like Sheriff Arpaio. Yeah, don't say anything bad about Sheriff Arpaio. You know, so it's like the whole city is afraid of their sheriff. It's just a very bizarre thing. People living in tent city that are like wanting his autograph, you know? It's yeah. like, oh, let, let's get the autograph of the man who's like forcing me to live out in a 130 degree tent. <laughs> um, it's just a, it's very weird. So, you know, as far as these cartels go, yeah, it's just it's just all these it's it's just hard to tell. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. is it really some centralized thing where this is all happening, or is it just like you know, one guy makes this threat? Is there you know, if I kill Rick Perry, do, am I really going to get forty five million dollars? You know, where right. do I how do I collect that? Yeah, like that's you know? actually they're going to call. Is that, that going to be over PayPal? They're probably or like, just going to kill you. Yeah, am I going to give my <laughs> PayPal account um, to uh, <laughs> exactly. collect my reward? I, you know, so I don't know how much of that is real, how much of it is all talk. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, with the drug cartels, I know just obviously being in the industry, it is frightening at times. A lot of people won't cover the activity as of the drug cartels because they'll chop off your head or, you know, shoot up the news station like they like they do there on the border in the border cities. But now, obviously, we have radical Islam kind of coming out and doing this as well. So we're, we're seeing that they have these groups that are, are beginning to react. You know, when you poke the bear, now the bear is kind of, 
yeah. showing its teeth. It is kind of a scary thing. It's just kind of, I guess, with the with the. Is there something more honest I think about cartels than than the whole terrorist thing? And that it's just all about money. You know, I can't explain it. I know it's a bad. It's not not a good thing to say. But it's something more honest about just handing someone money and saying go kill someone than it for being for some uh, religious ideology that doesn't make any sense. It's mm. just completely crazy. Uh, when I was in Juarez, I was interviewing young boys who would commit murder for forty dollars a pop. You know, and it, it just makes you realize, like, you know, humanity. But then you get to this place and you realize, you know, these people don't even know how they're going to eat, you know, tomorrow, and. Mm. And so you're, you're, you know, you got people with all this money next to people that are completely poor, and, and I think th those kind of conditions are always going to crazy. I think I think a lot of it is just poverty and ignorance, you know, and mixed in with people trying to make a lot of money and control people, mm -hmm. and you know, they I think they just kind of spend things to their own advantage when they can. Yeah. So what do you think this? the fake drug war could have, what effect could that have if we, you know, if, I mean, obviously your documentaries have done a lot to shine some light on the truth there, but do you think that could have any effect on, on you know, these kids and? You know, I don't know. I mean, right now it's it's interesting. I, uh, I go to Colorado, you know, I, I'm from, California was the leading edge of the whole marijuana thing for a while, but now Colorado is obviously taking the sword. And, and now it's interesting that uh, uh, neighboring states uh, like Oklahoma are, I guess, suing Colorado because of all the marijuana coming over the border. As, and then they're trying to use that as a reason of why it's not working. And I think anybody with half a brain would look at that and go, well, that's a reason why you should legalize it in Oklahoma. They, I mean, it just goes to show that people in Oklahoma, if people in Oklahoma are having to go to Colorado to buy marijuana, Right. Uh, uh, what am I missing here? Yeah, it's you know, not what just exactly this, am I missing here? Yeah, it's not. Of course, just then you got Oklahoma and it's like Oral Roberts and all that. So I don't know. They got the 900 <laughs> foot Jesus there. I, you know, I don't know what to think. <laughs> well, okay. So in American drug war, the first American drug war, you set out to discover basically why the drug war is such a big failure. American drug war two, the second film follows cutting edge of cannabis research. Um, obviously, a few years in between those films, so we're starting to see a shift. Where do we see this going? Well, it's interesting that we've gone all the way from marijuana is bad for you, can cause cancer to a gateway drug, all the way to marijuana can actually not only help with cancer, but actually cure cancer in some forms. You know, I mean, how much further do you have to go? You know, meanwhile, every day the FDA is approving another like hellish drug and saying that's okay, uh, even though it has all these incredible, horrible side effects. And yet, and 80% of the population wants marijuana legalized, and yet they're going to just keep clinging on to this. I think, I think the drug war and what's happening with legalization of marijuana and the whole movement right now is just so in your face of how corporate, corporate interests are outweighing the voters' desires. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just getting more and more blatant mm -hmm. as time goes, because with the Internet and social media, you know, the, the secret is out of the bag, the genie's out of the bottle that marijuana should have never been le illegal in the first place. And right. it wasn't in the first place. It's um, a plant. Yeah, it's a plant, you know, <laughs> to, you know, and, and it's, uh, it just, it just sucks. It's, you know, I mean, it should be growing everywhere. It's it just, it just, you come to Texas and you see all these people that could really use it and need it. And they, you know, it's like, why isn't it just growing everywhere? And meanwhile, yeah, well, because the, the just, drug cartel, Big Pharma, doesn't yeah. want that to happen. Yeah, meanwhile, <laughs> people are dying from uh, Tylenol. Right. You know, and exactly. cough syrup and, and uh, people's not to lives mention are these, yeah. destroyed from being addicted to these pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah. And not to mention, I mean, because when you get into this, like, you know, people go down the rabbit hole of taking uh, taking uh, pain pills. And then and then once you start taking pain pills for so many years, you end up having to take antidepressants. And then you start to have to take pills that are like to counterbalance the problems created by the antidepressants. Yeah. And that's just like, oh, it's just all okay. And the doctors yeah, take will just keep that, leading you down that, that thing. And then they're commingling with each other. And, and you mentioned your, your, your blood pressure is going off the wall and you're having suicidal thoughts. But you mentioned to your doctor, like, what about cannabis? Like, uh, exactly. You know? and, it, and it's just, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know. There's certain things that maybe shouldn't have been for profit. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not... I believe in capitalism, uh, but something about the medical profession being so for profit and mm -hmm. how much profit there is in the pharmaceutical industry and all that, 
you know, I, I don't know, it feels like the whole medical profession just went off track somewhere. Absolutely. You know? Being able I to mean, hold these cures from people, yeah, letting people die. And, you know, and, and going into Obamacare and, and just all the, the hellishness of getting in.